Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's meeting. Um, we are here with the Mental Health Ambassadors Program. My name is Madeline Cook. I am a junior majoring in biomedical engineering with minors in chemistry and neuroengineering. And I joined the Mental Health Ambassadors Program because I believe it's important to not only learn about mental health for ourselves, but to also share this knowledge with others in order to start breaking down the stigma towards mental health. Hi everyone, my name is Destiny Cravens. I'm a junior majoring in psychology with a minor in social psychology. And I joined the Mental Health Ambassadors Program because I have experience having someone I love be diagnosed with a mental illness. So mental health promotion has always been an extreme passion of mine. Hello everyone, my name is Sierra Samuel and I am a junior biology major, psychology and chemistry minor. I joined the Mental Health Ambassadors Program for the mental health promotion opportunities on campus. I love how diverse all of our opportunities are. As I said today, we're here with the Mental Health Ambassadors Program, which is a student peer-to-peer -peer promotional, um, mental health promotional program that focuses on mental health knowledge, uh, self-care, and resiliency. And today we have special spe guest speaker, Salam Green. Please welcome Salam. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me again here with the Mental Health Ambassadors. Uh, my name is Salam Green. I'm an artist in resident with, residence with UAB Arts and Medicine, which focuses on arts and health in the healing environment and the hospital setting and in settings where there is a need for health, um, healing, and um, art. And I am a creative writer and a poet. And today, I will be doing um, Poetic Justice, uh, Redeeming Healing Power Poetry, reading some poems, and then kind of talking about how each one of these poems helps support us in redeeming our own personal justice, as well as telling stories. So my background is in education, also have a uh, background in social services, and also relate to this entire issue around mental health and promoting mental health and supporting those persons who are experiencing um, their own mental health uh, issues. And I hope that um, as we talk today about the topic of justice and joy, that we'll all find some redemption and justice and joy for ourselves. So the first poem that I wanted to do was a poem um, by the Buddha. Let us live in joy. No hating those who hate us. Among those who hate us, we live free of hate. Let us live in joy, free from disease. Among those who are diseased, let us live free of disease. Let us live in joy. Free from greed among the greedy, among those who are greedy, let us live free of greed. Let us live in joy. Though we possess nothing, let us live freely and let us live joy and let us live joy like the bright gods live joy. Let us live joy. A lot of times during what's happening today in society and culture, we might not be able to necessarily access joy and to not take it in the direction of toxic positivity um, we feel what we need to feel and we allow those emotions to come where they need to come. But at the same time, just reading poetry or reading a poem or having the spoken word might be able to bring us to a space of gratitude and also might be able to bring us to a space where we're able to write out some of the things that we're grateful for and as well as write out some of the joys that we see all around us. And so today after reading that poem, some of the joys that I'm able to extract from that poem is the entire idea about let us live in joy. Let us be joy. Let us extract and access our own joy. And that's what I wanted to bring a point about that joy is justice and justice is joy. And how we redeem justice for ourselves is through joy. There was a man who lived in a old, old home. 
and he himself was a pretty old man. And one day he went for a walk out in nature, for a walk in the forest. And he came upon a magician. Now this just wasn't any kind of magician. This was a magician that brought a very, very special gift to anyone who was walking in the forest. And it just happened to be on this day this old man who lived in an old house came upon the magician. And the magician had in his hand a broken vase. Now, not only was the vase broken, but it was clearly a very, very beautiful vase. It still had all of the shine and it still had its beauty attached to it, even though some of its parts were missing. The magician offered to give the broken, beautiful vase to the old man who was walking in the forest away from his old home. But at first the old man said, no, 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 no. I, I, I cannot take that vase. It is much too beautiful for an old man who lives in an old home to partake of. But the magician insisted and the magician said, yes, please take this very special magical vase. And so the old man obliged. He took the old magical vase that was broken, yet still very shiny and very beautiful. The old man turned around and went back into his old house and as he opened the door next to all of the cobwebs and some of the dust mites, sat a dusty, dirty table full of papers. And so he sat that beautiful, broken, yet shiny vase on that table. And as the days went by, that old man would pass by the table and he would see that vase shining. He would look at the vase and he would say things such as, oh, what a beautiful vase. But the old man still believed that he did not deserve to have such a beautiful vase and such a dirty place. So one day the old man decided that he was just going to try to see if he could get rid of all, of all the old cobwebs that were covering the table where the beautiful but broken vase sat on. So he started to clear the cobwebs and after clearing the cobwebs, he began to admire the vase. He began to see that the vase had really, really beautiful, tiny, beautiful blue particles inside that shone like the sea. And then he decided he was going to empty the table of all the papers and he began to look at the vase again and he began to see that inside of the vase there were these just really small beautiful lines that represented time and then the next day the old man decided that shoot he was going to clean his whole entire house that old decrepit house that once had dust mites and cobwebs, the old man said, I'm going to clean this house from top to bottom. And the ceilings began to shine and the floors began to shine. And that table where that broken yet beautiful vase sat on looked brand new. And now the old man said, this vase lives inside a home that's worthy of its beauty that's worthy of the sea shining inside of the walls of a home that once was full of cobwebs. And so the old man went back out into the forest, went back out into the nature, and he was looking for that magician. After all, that magician had magic powers, but he couldn't find the magician anywhere. But what he did find, deep, deep, deep in the forest, where these shiny, beautiful glass particles 
So the old man began to dig and dig and dig in the dirt until he got a handful of these shiny, old, beautiful particles. And he began to stuff them down his shirt. And he began to briskly walk back through the forest, back to his old home that now began to shine like the sea that smelled fragrant and was all clean of cobwebs. And on that shiny table sat that beautiful but broken vase. And the old man began to put the pieces back together again, making that vase complete, making that vase even more beautiful than that vase had ever intended to be. And now the old man not only had a clean home, free of cobwebs and dust mite, but he also had a clean heart, full of beauty and full of joy. And I wonder for us, is there any perspective or any way that we can look at life much like the old man? Are we the old man or are we the magician? And if we are the old man, then we would know that it would take us some time before we are to extract that joy. And that magician immediately knew what the joy was in that vase. Or perhaps we have a space and we do not believe that space in our hearts and our lives are deserving of joy or deserving of a beautiful vase or deserving of the particles of a vase to shine or deserving of the cobwebs to be removed. But what that old man did was one cobweb at a time, one step at a time, he began to renew his space and his mind. And that one beautiful but broken vase reminded that old man of the worthiness of joy in his life, even in the midst of what could have been a lack of potential. The old man found great potential, not only in the vase, but in the beauty and joy of his life. Thank you for listening. The next poem that I wanted to read that um, I think talks a little bit about joy and the joy that we all have is a poem by William Blake. Blake. I have no name. I am but two days old. What shall I call thee? Joy is my name. I happy am. Pretty joy, sweet joy, but two days old. Sweet joy, I call thee. Thou dost smile. I sing the while sweet joy befall thee. I sing the while sweet joy befall thee. I have no name. I am but two days old. What shall I call thee? I happy am. Joy is my name. A sweet joy befall thee. Sweet joy befall thee. Pretty joy, sweet joy, but two days old. Sweet joy, I call thee, thou dost smile. I sing the while, sweet joy befall thee. I sing a while, sweet joy befall thee. So this poem is about an infant and the immeasurable, out of the blue joy that infants normally have just when they are born. Who are we? Who am I? That infant is joy. Who are we? Who am I? Happy I am. Who are we? Who am I? Sweet joy just be falling on that infant. Sometimes we must go back to the space or perhaps we can go back to those spaces of just as a mere child. The joy and the whimsy of just a simple smile the befalling of joy as if it was rain, even though there may be clouds and storms ahead. That infant, that baby, that child still decides to go out and to run in the rain and to dance in the puddles and to allow joy, sweet joy, to befall them, to rain upon them. Sweet joy. And that's the justice that we all can give ourselves, 
is the redeeming power of how do we redeem our joy? We go back into the space of childhood, of infancy, when we first felt joy. Was it a raindrop on our forehead? Was it a taste for the first time of applesauce? Was it the smile of a mother or father? Was it just the immeasurable joy of knowing that we had no responsibility? Was it riding a bicycle? That's the justice that we give ourselves, redeeming our joy in times where we may have lost the actual feeling and emotion of joy. So I wanted to ask some questions of the mental health ambassadors and anyone else, absolutely. And the first question I wanted to ask us, if we can go back to um, the uh, story about the old man and the vase. The old man with the beautiful yet broken vase. The magic of that vase. And I wanted to just ask the question, when was the last time that you allowed magic or something magical happened to you in your life. Now there's miracles and there's magic and we can all look and lump them all into the same category. But if you can think of anyone on the um, Zoom today, can you tell me about magic in your life and what that means to you? And think about the poem about the older man that we just heard. I guess I'll go. Um, immediately, I think about like this exam I had last week, and it was like building up to this like one moment, and then like when everything like finally clicked, I feel like that was kind of the like moment of magic, where like everything finally made sense, and like everything was like free and open. I wasn't like piling on like stress anymore about it because like it finally made sense. So that was kind of a feeling of magic for me. Thank you. Thank you. The magic of releasing. <laughs> yes, thank you. Anyone else? Magic. The broken but beautiful magic in our lives. Um, I guess I can go. Okay. So I think it was last weekend, I had like a pretty high level game that I had to do since I'm a soccer referee. And before it, I was really nervous and like I felt really sick just from all the nerves. And then when it was over, it had gone fine. So I was, I was feeling totally fine after that. So kind of like that magic of like, transformation after going through something. Mm. That is beautiful. The magic of transformation of being transformed after actually going through something that maybe was a little stressful or caused us some frustration or we didn't even know how the outturn outcome uh, might be. And mm -hmm. then actually going through it brings us that magic of how that looks as well. Yes, broken but beautiful magic. Yes. Anyone else? Okay. If anyone else, you can go ahead and jump in if you want to. I think what I liked about the Buddha poem, it said, let us live in joy, no hating those who hate us. Among those who hate us, we live free of hate. Let us live in joy. Let us live in joy among those who hate us. We live free of hate. There's freedom in joy. There's freedom and actually the transformation of the magic that each one of you all represented and you spoke of. I think the last question I have is about joy as a child. I have no name, I am but two days old. What shall I call thee? Happy am I, joy is my name, sweet joy befall thee, pretty joy, sweet joy but two days old. Sweet joy, I call thee, thou dost smile. I sing the wild, sweet joy befall thee, sweet joy befall thee. I am but two days old, sweet joy. 
Is there any memory that comes up when you think about joy as a child? This is something I don't want you to think too hard about. I want you just to think of that sweet joy as a child. One incident, one memory, one person, one circumstance, one situation. I am but two days old where we were not overthinking joy <laughs> or even having to look too hard for it. But it was just part of who we were and part of I am happy. Our name was Joy. So let's think for a couple, for about 30 seconds, um, and then it'll be time for us to end. About 30 seconds, about a time where you, as a child, have a memory of joy. Just a memory of joy. I remember uh, learning how to ride my bike um, for the first time. And it was in um, at my grandmother's house in the in the in rural Alabama in the country, and it was not on a girl's bike, but it was on my brother's um, bike, which was of course a boy's bike. So, um, you know, it was a little bit harder to learn how to ride his bike. But I remember that there was this sweet person who was teaching me how to ride the bike, and uh, he kept saying, "Pedal while I push." And how many times that he would push and I wouldn't pedal. And he would push and I wouldn't pedal and he would push and I wouldn't pedal. And each time I would either fall or I would tumble or the bike wouldn't go anywhere. But this person would never stop pushing and never stop encouraging me to pedal until after a couple of, I guess, minutes, I began to pedal and that push propelled me. And those pedals allowed me how to learn how to ride that bike, even if it was just a couple of meters. And the joy of the wind and the joy of the accomplishment and the joy of pedaling and the joy of release and letting go and the joy of that memory today still brings me a smile. So anyone, as we, in our, in our closing, what are some memories you have as a child that brings you joy? The first thing that comes to my mind is my brother and I, like behind our apartment when we were younger, had this really big hill, or at least it was big to us. So we would like roll down it like every day. And then obviously we would itch and stuff. But that's like the first memory that I can think of that really brings me joy. Yay. Go roll down some heels, Destiny. No, <laughs> we're not rolling. <laughs> Maybe not, but I don't know. I won't judge if we did. <laughs> Anyone else? Memories of joy, sweet joy be falling up. <laughs> The first thing I thought of was just like when I was little, I used to go on this swing set by my house all the time. And one time I was there with like one of my friends and it started to rain. And instead of like, you know, heading back inside, we just kind of sat there and just like enjoyed it and just continue to swing. And every time I think about it, it just brings a smile on my face. Oh, awesome. Sweet joy. Sweet joy memories. Absolutely. Anyone else? I actually have a very similar story of learning to ride my bike at my grandmother's house um, in Montgomery. And I was like the last one of me and my brothers to feel confident enough to take off the training wheels. And I was so scared of getting hurt and of not being good at it. And um, I, my, my grandmother would just like, she kept practicing with me and she kept telling me exactly what to do and she kept helping me and then I got to you know I saw my parents car coming down the street and I like ran outside and I got on my bike and I was like showing off that I could ride my bike without the training wheels and everything and I just remember like seeing their car coming down and getting to show off my new talent and just being so proud of myself for something so small like you know, in the grand scheme of things, a lot of people know how to ride bikes, but for me, it was like I'd climbed Mount Everest. <laughs> Absolutely, because that was your first time, and that was a great memory, and we will never, ever, and I just love the beauty of that, of just climbing Mount Everest and feeling that sense of joy, and how joy allows us to feel just such a sense of confidence and accomplishment, but also just a sense of ourselves. And I can relate to Montgomery because I was at my grandmother's house, which is in Snow Hill, which is not too far from Montgomery. So um, absolutely, joy. Anyone else, any other memory? I love that. Well, um, as we close, I wanted to give us some tidbits on how we can uh, engage and joy this week 
or just engage and enjoy whenever we would like. It doesn't have to be this week. And some tips and tidbits on some basic uh, things that we can do to make joy a routine in our lives. Um, one thing that we can do is write down those early memories of what brought us joy, riding the bike, or maybe it was riding the bike and it just happened to be with our grandmother or just that whole idea of being out in nature or on a dirt road. Uh, write down those early memories of what brought you joy, being in the, um, you know, in, in nature and just allowing your body to physically roll down the hill or to be with a brother or a loved one. We can write down those early memories of when we, ha when we first remembered joy or that still kind of sticks in our brain. Another thing that we can do is we can go to a place or a space that brings us joy. I won't judge. It might be Walmart or Target. I don't know. You know, Target brings you joy. Why don't you just, I mean, I know if you don't have the Target money, but still, I mean, life goes on. But yes, yeah, it brings you joy just to say, you know what, I'm going to get in the car and I'm going to go to Target and I'm going to, you know, walk around and I'm going to see what's new, right? Or the beach. So write down some space, go to a space or place that actually brings you joy. And then the third thing that you can do, the first thing, of course, Write down that early memory that kind of still sticks out in your head about you first having joy. Next thing, go to a space or a place. And if it's not a place, it can be a space in your home or it can be a comfy, cozy space or spot or it can be just sitting in your car listening to music, what have you, or just sitting um, outside a stoop or on in the park or whatever. Um, and then the third thing that you can do in order to kind of engage in joy and to help support your journey with joy and to give yourself justice with joy is to um, think about what type of art or music or craft brings you joy. If you know music brings you joy, every morning or afternoon or during the day, have a song in your head or begin to play that music as you're doing the work that you're doing. If you love to sew or if you love to knit or if you love to iron or if you lo love to do you know, visual arts or pastels or jewelry making or uh, pottery or, you know, some kind of art that I have, visual art that I have not mentioned, allow yourself to go back into that space and bring that back into your life. Cultivate joy today and allow it to befall you like rain. Sweet joy. It's justice for us. It's justice for all. Thank you guys for listening to me today. I think that is my time. I bid you joy. Sweet joy. <laughs>